Alright guys, so welcome to another video. Today we're going to be talking about the fastest leveling method possible that you can do for the Wrath of Lich King Classic launch. I have been talking to a few people who are pushing for Realm First achievements, and this is essentially exactly what they are doing. And today I'm going to tell you all of their secrets when it comes to questing prep and also their leveling strategy. You know, are they doing open world stuff, are they doing dungeon soloing, what are they doing? Now, quest preparation doesn't need to be incredibly heavy for people going for a realm first attempt. This is because if you are soloing a dungeon, you are getting 4.4k experience per kill. And if you are duoing a dungeon, it's 2.2k XP per kill. So you only have to kill 5 mobs or 10 mobs to match the XP gained from a big juicy dungeon quest in TBC. This doesn't mean that heavy quest prep like my guide isn't useful for the average player because for the average player, you're going to be at a huge advantage if you can get to level 71 before you hit Northrend because then you can jump straight to Dragon Blight and get ahead of everyone. Because it's very likely that people actually going for Realm First will not be doing open world leveling, especially if they're streaming because then they run a lot of risks of getting ganked and having quest competition. However, they will not stay in dungeons forever, I'll talk a little bit more about that later. But let's get back to quest prep. What's more important for a realm first pusher is the speed of turning in those quests. There's simply no time to be flying around, even on an epic mount in Outland, to turn in quests at several different quest hubs. You can easily kill five mobs in a dungeon to get more XP than a TBC dungeon quest. Then it's only like three kills to match the normal amount of XP you're going to get from a normal quest in TBC. This is why getting quests that can be turned in very close to a summon stone is very essential. And this is what I've personally been doing. All of my quests are either big chunky dungeon quests, and I can instantly turn them in near a summon stone to a dungeon. Sometimes a little bit of flying is required. For instance, when I get summoned to Rampart, I'll have to fly up to Honor Hall to turn in some quests, but I'll be turning in three Shattered Halls quests for 25k XP each, the Omnius Report for an extra 8k, and I've also pre prepped the Shattered Halls key quest that gives an extra 44k XP. I will also have to fly around Zangamash a little because I've got huge turn ins dotted around the zone, but once everything is turned in, I'll have 200k XP just from that zone alone. And this is because of the Sporgar rep quest that I can have pre prepared with items without having the quest in my quest log. And to be honest, the extra time spent here isn't really that much of an issue because I need to go and get two other people to run to the Nexus to summon me there instantly. Otherwise, I'd have to run there on my own. All that time spent running to the Nexus is time that could be spent gaining experience points. So it will be a total waste of time. This means I'll be constantly gaining XP from the moment I start turning in quests in TBC to the moment where I get summoned to the Nexus and start grinding the rest of the way. There'll be absolutely no breaks. I've also done the rep ring quest for another huge chunk of XP, you know, the Caverns of Time one. Should give me nearly 150k XP since I have the Vials of Eternity raid quest and the Black Morass quest to turn in straight away. By the way guys, you do actually need to do the Vials of Eternity quest, the raid quest, to unlock the rep ring quest. So if you have a booster character or a death knight, you actually need someone to share that quest with you, you know, because you can't actually gain that quest anymore. It's kind of rare obviously because you need someone who hasn't done that quest already. I got quite lucky because someone randomly shared it in an Alteric Valley game. Speaking of Alteric Valley, I have also done my Alteric Valley rep to Exalted for all of those turn-ins. I'm also taking advantage of the Curran Var Village Hub. I have five quests to turn in there in a very simple small hub, one of them also being a dungeon quest. You can also get two follow-up quests for turning in these quests for a simple fast extra 12k XP because it literally requires to go run over a hill, well fly over a hill, kill one mob and go back. Plus, there's four items you can pick up here that give four more quests for 12k each. And all you have to do is click like a cupboard and a weapon rack, etc. in this little village. It takes like 30 seconds for an extra 48k XP. So that's 144k XP in around about two minutes. And I can get summoned there with the Tempest Keep Summoning Stone. But what I will say is people taking the extra mile will probably have Warlocks positioned even closer to these quest hubs for the turn-ins, rather than having to rely on dungeon summoning stones. I also have a number of quests to turn in and Shatterer, I have the Arcane Tone, the Sun Fury Signets, Firewind Signets, everything like that, because you can have those quests ready in your bags 
to instantly turn in after you accept them so you don't need them in your quest log prepared. And I'll also be turning in the daily heroic and the daily dungeon quest. And from there I can very easily take a portal to Stormwind or Orgrimmar, you know, if I was playing Horde and get straight to the Nexus, or get summoned there if I can get two other people to go and summon me. You can get yourself summoned with two other friends to all of these locations. There's six different locations in total. You basically need two people with six level 70s to really pull this off properly, but you can ping pong summon yourself. So for instance, you know, your friends only have four level 70s, you can have your own characters ready at the stones so that you can kind of like summon them and then they can summon you with a simple relog. Also, the summon stones only require you to be the same level as the dungeon. So for instance, Rampart, you only actually have to be level 58 to summon a level 70 there. And I will have my hearthstone set to Shatterer so I can summon myself there because obviously there's going to be no actual summoning stones in Shatterer. And then obviously I will either have to run to the Nexus or get summoned there. Now, first of all, why would you do the Nexus over Utgard Keep? Well, there's a number of reasons really. First of all, it has more enemies. You don't have to waste time killing the bosses in order to gain access to all of those enemies. And by the time you've got round the whole dungeon and you've killed all the mobs, you're pretty much already back at the start of the dungeon. So there's much less time running in and out and resetting compared to Utgard Keep. Because obviously in Utgard Keep, you do have to like, you know, once you've killed the last boss or if you're going to skip that, you jump down and then you have to, you know, run out and it takes a little longer. It's not that much longer, there's probably not that much difference really. I just think the Nexus is going to be better because you actually do also get more XP per run. There just really feels like there's a better mob density in the Nexus. The fastest methods when it comes to dungeon leveling right now are either solo, two-man or trio, but obviously this depends on your class. Personally, I'm two-manning with a tank without a healer, so that's an Holy Death Knight and a Feral Druid. The most optimal, I think, at the minute is a prop warrior and a healer, because their damage is just unreal. Like, the prop warrior will do as much damage as two DPS, so all they really need is a healer to allow themselves to pull more mobs and have absolutely no downtime, and they'll be pushing way over 1 million XP per hour. Which means, even if they didn't do any quest prep, and the XP per hour is going to increase when you go to high level dungeons, bear in mind, but if we just base it on 1 million XP per hour, you'll be like level 80 in 16 hours, which is insane. Considering 5-man routes will take you 28 hours. The reason why Realm First players are going for the dungeon strategy is to obviously avoid competition in the first two zones. There's going to be a lot of people running around, stealing the quest mobs and stealing the items off the ground. So there's absolutely no time wasted for spawns, and this will get you ahead of everyone. And then, when you are level 77, this is when the Realm First people will switch to open world leveling. They may not do it if their server is a complete mess, but Realm First pushers should be way ahead of everyone at that point, because it should only take them about 7 hours to get to level 77. Well, maybe 7 to 10 hours. And then, the Storm Peaks and Ice Crown will be basically totally empty apart from other Realm First pushers. But the main reason why people are going to go to open world leveling at 77 is because of cold weather flying. This allows you to level up and quest on your epic mount, which will be insanely fast and the XP per hour will go past and beat dungeons. The Realm First pushers will finish the journey open world leveling on their epic mounts. Not sure whether they'll do a duo group or they do it solo, that remains to be seen. But basically with an epic mount you are turning in quests ludicrously fast. And the last thing to mention here really is obviously all of our own first pushes are going to get every single consumable that you can possibly get. It's going to be flasks and food, then also weapon oils or sharpening stones. Even though they don't work on Raffle Lich King weapons, well, beyond a certain point anyway, but on a certain item level, when you get a somewhere weapon or your brutal PvP weapon with a weapon oil or a sharpening stone, it will basically trump anything that you can get until you are doing like high level dungeons. Now guys, if you do want the quest list that all the Realm First pushers are getting and what I'm personally getting to get ahead of everyone in Rafflechkin Classic, all you have to do is subscribe to the channel and you'll find it in the description of my subscriber-only trailer. And you may be thinking it's way too late as I'm watching this video to do it. Honestly guys, I did it in two afternoons. The prep for this does not require a lot of time at all. 
particularly if you queue dungeons as a tank because you know you just have to do a few dungeons one dungeon run normally completes about three quests there's a few other quests that you can quickly do honestly guys it doesn't take that long at all i've probably done it within the space of eight hours and honestly if you can get a group for some of these dungeons i did actually solo some of them Personally, I will try to go for the Realm First Death Knight on my server, but I'm going to feel the waters and see how this actually turns out. After 12 hours of grinding, which I will absolutely do, definitely, if I see that I'm ahead of people, then I might, I might carry on pushing, you know, go to full, like, 15 to 20 hours to see if I can get Realm First. But if at that point I'm way behind everyone, I'm going to do what I should do, really, and be a normal person and just go to bed. Obviously, you can follow the journey of great achievement or great failure on my Twitch because I will be streaming the whole thing on Twitch and Metagoblin1 you can check that out in the description down below as well but anyway my name is Metagoblin until the next video ciao